Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Danielle, Cheryl, as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month right here on Your View, we'll be running several special program series highlighting Hispanic themes. And I assure you, these shows are some that you definitely don't want to miss. That's right. And one of those shows is a 10 part series called Living Treasures of the Yucatan. Bill Rosado produces and hosts the show, and he is here with more details. Welcome to Main Street Living, Bill. Thank you very much. So as I mentioned, you produced a show called Living Treasures of the Yucatan. How would you describe what the show is about? Well, I grew up in uh, Medellin, Yucatan until the age of 15. Um, and over the years, there were very small treasures. And I refer that to the people and the traditions that seem to be fading away with time. And I wanted to preserve some of them. So I saw our series as preserving some of those beautiful moments that are that, that we want to retain for the for the, the, the young children in the future to see. Ah, so the treasures are actually living people. Talk to us about some of these treasures. Well, um, I, I'll tell you like this. Um, it started with, I wanted to do this, just film a little bit for my grandchildren. Mm. And uh, Ken Vos, who directed this with me, he says, no, we got to do an actual series, he said, because there's so many, so many interesting topics to to talk about, such as the first episode was the, the gentleman who sharpens knives, that walks down the street every day, and is engaged in a career which, um, again, is fading. And he knows every client that, that he has, has been working with for many, many years, and he sharpens the knives, the scissors, and that's about a five minute process, but the conversations he has with his clients are, are just, it's just a, it, an absolute t treasure to see that. What are some of the different skills that you're afraid would disappear with this generation? Well, the, the street vendors, I see them, um, there's less and less in, of them in, in the city. Um, a lot of it is because economics is very hard to make a living, you know, sharpening knives or shining shoes or even fixing pots and pans. Some of these people still come down the street and the housewives come out. But anymore, we live in a world of replacement. Why fix up a pan? Just throw it out and get a new one. Well, it, it, may, it may sound practical, but it takes away part of like, what we all lived with for so many years. And I remember my mother looked forward. This is before supermarkets were around or stores were around. Literally, these people were part of our life. They, they, they fixed the shoes. They even sold us dirt for the flowers in the house, fixed pots and pans sold bread, pastries, tortillas. They come down the street, you know, making a certain noise that, the, that you know the vendor was outside. Um, and I see, I, I see the part of life kind of fading away. And it's a shame because there's a, um, I also believe that that's part of the heritage. And for many years, I lobbied trying to get even the government to chip in a little bit to keep this because it is it's something that people, even tourism appreciates when they walk down the street and they see a person with a massive box of candies on top of their head selling it you know it's part of our culture i'm so glad that you mentioned that because you're right people just rush out to the big box stores now where they order things online but when you can go and have that face-to-face -face interaction and get some of those goods and supplies that you need there's so much more meaning behind it and you know when it comes to you really diving into the history of the people of the Yucatan, what makes you so passionate about wanting to do this and keep the traditions alive? Um, I came at the age of 15, uh, and by all means, I'm, I'm proud to be an American. I'm a Mexican by birth, and um, I, I just want to share. The, the passion is that I want to share these this small moments in life um, with people. Some of my friends, when they go down, they can't believe that somebody still goes down the street selling bread. Um, so I want to share. I want to share this part of the, the, the culture. And that's that's my passion. I want people to see. And we we'll live in a time in which there's so much controversy about countries and whether it's Mexico, the United States. And, and I want to show that there's more to that. You know, there's a lot of beauty that, that I think we could offer that. It's not sensationalism. It's the small things, I think, that we're starting to lose sight of. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the little things are so important. What What are a couple of your favorite stories that we will get to see in this series? Um, there's, there's there's so many of them, but but beginning with the the the, uh, the knife shop, um, 
I remember him when he was a kid. He was he was hanging around. Very very tall. He's kind of a tall Mexican guy. Spoke very good English. He at one time was a bodyguard for um, for the consulate of the Mexican consulate in in England. And that's why. And I said, you are sharpening knives down the street. He said, well, I I served in the military. He says, but to be honest with you, I love being out here and meeting people. And I don't even have a kitchen. I don't have to cook. All my clients feed me throughout the day. He said. So I thought that was wonderful. Um, also. When that, this little old lady that, that, that positioned the baby, and in one of the episodes you're going to see, positions the baby for pregnant, for pregnant women, which, by the way, is being recognized uh, uh, currently by, the, by, 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 the, the, by doctors, that it is a, a good uh, a method. It's a very good um, therapy for the baby to feel some hands. Um, this lady was, I don't know, four foot uh, five, maybe she's a tiny little lady. Um, she's 90-some years old. Mm. And you're talking to somebody who isn't really talking about, hey, I'm old. She's focused on the work that she does and with the little hands that, that, it, that I just saw so, so much care with the little wrinkled hands that, that were just doing in, in, uh, the best that she could, the best that she could offer, living in extreme poverty and things that being living in, in, in the United States and living in, in some maybe better conditions, um, you still you start to forget, in my, in my opinion, in value that the, the 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 work that these people do, the passion that they have, far outweighs any financial gain. Uh, so she mm-hmm. she taught me that a lot, the lady, because she she was just that she didn't even have the right clothing to wear. So we gave her a little dress, and she wanted to give it back to us. I said, "No, it's yours, ma'am." So mm-hmm. moments like that are, 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 to, are totally precious. And and almost everywhere that we went, when we we're filming this, I felt that the passion that I have for telling the story. Um, these people through me were feeling the same. I mean, from the gentleman that was banging with this with this uh, uh, steel hammer, these pieces of metal to, to 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 make shapes and so forth, and telling me, I asked him, "Where do you get this these materials?" He said, "On the streets. I walk down the, uh, the the highways. I find metal and I recycle it by making you know uh, hammock hooks and things like that." And I'm thinking to myself. Boy, these people figured out recycling way before we did. Oh, <laughs> so, the moment yeah. they got, yeah, the sandals. Uh, this, uh, somebody made right. sandals out of tires. It's like, yeah. you know, and, and trust me when I tell you that that's like, those sandals will last two hundred years. And I'm thinking, wow, desperation sometimes creates, you know, to, uh, it creates our future. I think you know, it really does. So. Yeah, there's so much we can learn from these people. And before we go, quickly tell us how our viewers can watch the show. I sincerely appreciate the fact that you're showing it on your network, and uh, I mean, it's, um, it's a proud moment for us. Absolutely. All right. So, yes, make sure you catch it out, yourview.com as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Danielle, do you love a serenade? <laughs> Especially from you, Cheryl. I'm not the best singer. But if you do love a serenade, stick around. We'll explain next. Oh, 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 oh,